Indian economy. But uh, another, uh, uh, you know, thing that talks about the economy itself is the auto space. Uh, that's a forward indicator. Uno Minda is the stock on our radar, a big, big mover. In fact, in just the last two years, the stock has rallied over 300%. Three times is the returns that it's given. This morning as well, in an otherwise wobbly market, it's, uh, uh, you know, at the high point of trade. The management recently met analysts and reiterated that the company is, of course, a well-placed to outpace the underlying industry. And that's uh, on account of increasing content per vehicle, market share gains and EV adoption itself. So to talk uh, uh, more about that, we do have with us uh, the group CFO, Sunil Bohra, joining in. Uh, Sunil, thank you for joining in. Always a pleasure speaking with you. The three triggers that everyone's talking about is uh, that you gaining market share, you increasing the content per vehicle and you uh, making a strong inroads into the electric vehicle space itself. So just wanted to, your thoughts uh, specifically on these three things. What is your current content per vehicle? How much does it go up to? What is your current market share? What are you targeting? And electric vehicles, how much do they account for in your overall mix of things? And where do they go to? Yeah. So first thing first, uh, in terms of content per vehicle, as you would have seen, that uh, we have been consistently increasing our kit value across categories. Uh, I would not be able to give you a single number because the way we capture our content per vehicle is yeah, uh, for a two-wheeler up, up to 100cc, 125cc and beyond and A segment, B segment, C segment and D segment in terms of PVs. So if you see past uh, few years, we have consistently been improving our content per vehicle. And more importantly, if you see the products which we have, which are part of our top line, none of them is impacted because of any transition to EV. So from that perspective, our existing portfolio, you know, has been agnostic to an IC engine or an EV engine. On top of it, there is a huge premiumization play in a lot of our uh, products like uh, your alloy wheels, your LED lamps, uh, the electronic horns, so, and the switches uh, kit value being consistently increasing and telematics. There are a lot of products which are consistently being increased adaptation in the vehicle. Some wear products which are in premium segment, now they are part of the base model itself, including like airbags, etc. So the existing kit value, as I said, has consistently been increasing across uh, categories uh, in the in the vehicles. On top of it, as you rightly mentioned, we have built our EV portfolio for uh, two-wheeler and three-wheeler segment as a portfolio which is unparalleled in the industry with the recent addition of uh, motors uh, with a joint venture with Bula Motors of Germany. We have almost the entire bouquet of uh, product ex except a uh, few products like battery or a tire or a, or a body where we don't have any intention to go. But excluding those, if you see, we have got almost uh, uh, the entire kit value uh, from an EV perspective. So whenever this uh, uh, demand for EV grows, I think we will be uh, ready to catch up uh, the growth momentum. And that is what these things which we spoke about, be it the increased kit value, be it the premiumization theme, be it the EV adopt, uh, adoption, etc., this is what gives us a conviction that uh, we should be consistently be able to outperform the uh, the industry in next uh, 5 to 7 to 8 to 10 years, I would say. Okay, so outperform the industry for the next 10 years. That's the next decade. Uh, Sunil Morning, Rima here. Uh, you've also indicated that EBITDA margins are going to improve for you, led by commodity deflation and improved profitability in your new product lines like sensors and two-wheeler alloy wheels. Can you tell us the margins that you're targeting, the number? Yeah. So uh, as you would have seen that last year to this year, we are improving margin by almost half a percentage point. But coming specifically to commodities, uh, Rima, as you would have noted, when the commodities were like consistently going up, I think our endeavor always has been to how do we share that burden of uh, the commodity price increases with our customers and pass that through fully and we insulate our uh, operating model. So when the commodities price come down, the benefit also gets passed on to our customers. So from that perspective, we have tried to insulate the company from the volatility of uh, the commodity prices on an annual basis. Yes, quarterly there can be some impact, but on an annual basis, you would see, will not have any significant impact of commodity prices uh, going forward. So I think that has been our endeavor. On top of it, uh, what gives us conviction to improve our margin profile is that uh, the increased uh, uh, volumes, uh, the operating leverage, and also some of the products where we believe the margins may be a little better. Otherwise, uh, our broad guiding uh, range uh, for EBITDA margin for this year has been uh, in the range of 11 to 12 percent. Last year, we did, I think, 10.3, uh, 10.4 percent. So from that perspective, I think we are still comfortable to uh, achieve that range within the uh, current uh, fiscal year. Going forward, uh, as you know that we are actually in a competitive world while uh, everybody would endeavor to improve their margins. But uh, I would say that in the auto segment where we are in, 
I think 11 to 12 percent margin is a, a decent margin and something we would like to consolidate and grow from there on in future. All right, it will be interesting to see how much uh, better can you grow from this 11 to 12 percent given the competition that you spoke about at the same time. Uh, you know, uh, the supporting factors for margins would be uh, higher value EV kits, etc. and higher valued products that you spoke about too. But can you share some numbers with us now? The first half, your revenues have been close to around that 5,400 crore mark year on year. Of course, on a low base, it's a jump of 46%. What do you intend to end this year with? And uh, you say that you target outperforming the industry over the next four to five years, perhaps even the decade. Um, what kind of compounding growth can we expect in terms of your revenue over the next uh, five years or so? So our, uh, you know that our revenue is uh, linked to the industry growth. Our 90% of revenues actually go into the direct line equipment. So what we say is it's very difficult to say whether we will grow 10%, 20% or 25 or 15. What we have been having our target is whatever industry grows. And we firmly believe India is in a sweet spot as we just hear in our previous session also. India will continue to grow. So our endeavor has been whatever is the industry growth in terms of volumes, we should grow at least 1.5x of the industry growth in terms of our revenues. So I think that is the target uh, which we have built for ourselves. And uh, as I said, it will be very difficult to say how much that will have a compounding impact, but uh, that is the target which we have set for ourselves. Mm. EV is roughly 1.5% of your revenues only, right? Sunil? One and a half times. So if industry grows, say, 10%, our target is to grow 15. If industry no, how much, eight, how much does EV contribute to your overall revenues right now? Yeah. So as of now, EV, we know it's it's very, very small. So uh, the revenue for or the volumes for EV last uh, month also, it was, I think, 3 to 4% of the total two-wheeler revenue. And if you see from Minda perspective, our 50% broadly, roughly revenue is two-wheeler, 50% is uh, uh, passenger vehicle. Yes, we do have CV, we do have three-wheeler, et cetera. I'm talking at a very, very high level. Of that 50% two-wheeler we have, it is only 3 to 4 percent. So overall pie, I think it's very, very small. So once uh, we see some bump up there, I think that's where we see the growth in the EV uh, vehicles. That will give us uh, that additional delta. But as of now, it's it's a small number. The orders from uh, the EV two-wheelers or the passenger vehicles increasing at a faster pace? Are they asking you for more right now? And have you tied up with all uh, the companies which are currently manufacturing EV vehicles? Or do you no, have absolutely. some that you're talking to? Go ahead. Yes, absolutely, you are right. So there are, uh, the projections are definitely very good and promising, but as we say, they are all projections because the market also has to adopt uh, the EV vehicle, uh, giving whatever cost, range, uh, the regulatory requirements you have. Uh, recently, we saw the new requirement around battery, etc. So there are some uh, industry also, as we know, has been improving, has been developing, uh, and the market adoption definitely is something which we have to work on. But in terms of volume, yes, we are uh, working internally uh, so to see that in terms of three-wheeler and uh, two-wheeler segment, should see 30-40% kind of penetration in next uh, five to six years. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, MK has actually put out a note where they expect the company's EV division to do around 1,500 to 2,000 crores in the next five to six years. Uh, they're saying that this is currently small, but it will increase at a faster clip going ahead. The street was... Uh, Listening into what you had to say, and uh, the stock has moved to the high point of trade. Thank you so much for joining in. That uh, is the management of Uno Minda, guiding for one and a half times growth uh, as far as the industry uh, versus the industry, and 11 to 12 percent sort of margin margin band is something that they aspire to sustain over the long term. With that, we slip into a short break. On the other side, we have uh, the management of Credit Axis Grameen joining in to talk about their business outlook. We also have a conversation with S. Narain of ICICI Pro MF on, this, on the business outlook of the company and his promising investment ideas for 2023.